Hello, scholars. We are back again for more amazing science. I'm hoping you guys are loving science because science is everywhere. My speech is science. The fact that you can hear me is science. This wonderful bow tie I'm wearing is science. It's all science. You cannot get away from science. And today we are continuing to understand this thing that we call science. How are we going to do that? We are going to continue to understand that matter has measurable. We can measure them physical properties. We can use our senses to determine them. Measurable physical properties that allow us to classify, break into groups. Yes, break into groups just like we did with you at school. And these physical properties that we can measure can be used to help us to classify matter into groups. And we're going to do that by continuing our talk about Temperature. Yes, temperature is so important. Temperature is so important because temperature is literally all around us. I need an umbrella today because the weather told me that certain things were going to happen. The same thing is prevalent with temperature. I know whether I need long sleeves, whether I need short sleeves. I know whether I need to wear a sweat top or know where to wear a thin shirt. I know whether it's going to be appropriate for outside activities. And I know whether I'm going to want to be inside sitting on my couch with a cool cup of water with lots of ice in it because it is so hot outside and I don't do the heat well. But these temperatures can also be compared. Yes, we can compare and contrast different temperatures. Now, here's what we've done. We have three thermometers that are going to assist us today. Thermometer A, I was by a heater. Thermometer B, I was by a freezer. And thermometer C, I am and still am out in the open based on your knowledge of temperature temperature is measuring the amount of thermal energy what do you expect to see on the thermometer that was by the heater what do you expect to see on the thermometer that was by the freezer and what do you expect to see on the thermometer that was and still is just sitting outside he's just chilling all by himself out in the open, out in the lonesome just outside having a happy day what do you expect to see remember that thermometers have Fahrenheit side and a Celsius side, that in science we use Celsius, it's part of the metric system, so that the world can communicate in one language about science, and that the liquid on the inside, when it is heated, it will rise, when it's cool, it will go down. What do we expect to find? And yes, just in case you were wondering, because I know you loved it, I still have my giant thermometer. Why? I don't know. I don't have any idea, but it's so cool to have a giant thermometer. Like, who would not want a giant thermometer? I feel like I should, everyone should have a giant thermometer. I want you to make your observations. If you have your journal, make your observations in the journal. What do you think the thermometer that was out in the open will read? What do you think the thermometer that was in the freezer will read? What temperature in degrees Celsius do you think that you'll see? And the thermometer that was by the heater, what do you expect to see? You can pause right now if you need to. And if you've already paused, then you're already back. And I'm talking to you as if you've been gone. And that's okay too. Let's take a look at these. We're going to start with, what do you want to start with? I, I love this. I'm going to get it. Feeling it? Say it out loud. Say it out loud. What do you want to start with? I'm hearing freezer, heater. I don't hear anything. I'm just playing. Let's just start with the heater. Why? Because I think that that one is cool. Our heater on the thermometer, when I had measured it, believe it or not, the heater was up over 110 degrees. Can you believe it? The red line on the heater, this is easier to see, the red mark on the heater was up to 110 degrees. Oh my goodness, that is really, really hot. Have you been outside on a hot day? Have you been outside in Texas when it's over 100 degrees or anywhere in the world? It's hot. 100 degrees is 100 degrees and it's always miserable. It should say 100 degrees slash miserable. We should all be able to agree on that. 100 degrees is, it's just not, why would I, why would I ever? I'm sweaty. It's hot outside. I don't like it, but I have to be out here because I have to live. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I, I just can't explain it either. What about the one that was in the freezer? What are your thoughts? 
The one that was by the heater was 110 degrees. What do we expect to find from the thermometer that was in the freezer? What do you think that I saw? Clearly, we can see the red line is much, much lower than it was on the one that was in the heater. It's much, much lower. What do we expect to find? Let me tell you what I found. The one that was in the freezer was around zero degrees Celsius. Yes, it was that big a difference. If you notice, the top numbers are red and the blue, the, the bottom numbers are blue. Why do you think that they did that? What are they trying to communicate about when the thermometer goes down and the thermometer goes up? If you know that one, just write it off in your notes. I think you've probably got it by now. But the thermometer that was in the freezer was around zero degrees Celsius. That is really cold. I can't even imagine sitting out there because you know what? Let me tell you a secret. I don't like the cold either. I don't. If it's too hot, I'm not happy. If it's too cold, I'm not. I just kind of like it right there in the middle. And that is why. Thermometer C just touched my heart like it touched all of it. It was so awesome. Thermometer C was at 72 degrees. Whoa, it's right there in that sweet spot. I'm, out, I'm, I'm, I'm warm, but I'm not sweaty, but I'm not too hot and I'm not too cold. It was right in the middle. Thermometer C was at 72 degrees. Now we can compare these thermometers. We can say that Thermometer C was closer to thermometer A. We can say that the one that was by the heater was much warmer than the one that was out in the open. Or we could say the thermometer by the heater was much warmer than the thermometer that was in the freezer. And then we can explain why. Like, why do we think those things happen? What do we think based on our knowledge of how a thermometer works? Like, why did those things happen? All of that is wonderful information, and all of that comes from this tool that we call a thermometer, a tool that is used to measure how hot or cold something is, a tool that is used to measure the amount of thermal energy that is either there or that is not there. That is why this is awesome, and I love it. Now, what are we going to be doing today? We are going to look at a 14-day forecast. On Google, you can Google 14-day forecast or your teacher can take a snapshot and send it to you. Either way, I want you to look at the temperatures for the next two weeks, 14 days, two weeks, seven and seven, and I want you to compare and contrast the temperatures by identifying the five highest temperatures and the five lowest temperatures. So you're gonna classify them. You're gonna classify them by the five highest temperatures and the five lowest temperatures. Why? Because temperature is a measurable physical property that we can use to classify matter. So I could take objects and we can figure out what their temperatures are and we can classify them. Matter of fact, we're doing that right now because every morning I have to take this little thing and I have to put it on my head and I have to write what my temperature is. And if my temperature is in a certain class over 100 degrees, then I am classified as a person that has to go home. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, 100 degrees is the mark to send us home. We're classified as the get out of here group. You are in a class of your own as well because you are amazing scientists who are studying temperature. And on this 14-day forecast, I know you're going to be able to take those and you're going to classify them into groups quite easily because you are amazing. And that's just what amazing scientists do. Have an absolutely wonderful day. And we will be back on with more very soon.